So hello everyone. Welcome to this another video of Scale Up India. I'm Abhishek Verma and you are watching the Hibernate series. So in today's video, we are going to discuss another type of inheritance. Now you will say that, okay, Abhishek, you have already covered three types of inheritance, which you mentioned and which we also see in the inheritance type enum, that is single table inheritance, joint inheritance and table per class inheritance. So what is left to cover? But believe me, whatever we are going to cover is going to be very important and it is going to be something different, which we have covered till now. Also, you will find that it is going to make your life even much more simpler when you are going to write your classes. So without wasting any more time, let's directly get started with our stuff. So now, as you can see, this is our owner class. And here we are having ID that is the primary key and it's auto generated. Then we have first name, last name, gender, city, state, mobile number, email ID and pet ID. So all these things were there. Then I also mentioned to you that we are having a pet entity also with ID again, auto generated primary key name, gender and type. And the relation between these two classes was many to one to one mapping. Sorry, not many to many mapping, sometimes a tongue twister. So it's a one to one mapping between these two classes. Then for this pet, I mentioned to you that here we are going to have a domestic pet as well as the wild pet table. So two tables are there. Then we have already discussed that for this, you can go for any kind of inheritance. You can go for single table joined or table per class and out of them, my favorite one is joint inheritance. Why so? Because there I'm getting three different tables, one for pet, one for domestic pet and one for wild pet. And all the tables, you can see the table is completely being mapped to the class. So in class, if I'm having four variables, so in the table also, I will be having four columns. So something like this. So joint is my favorite one. And also in the industry, this is mostly used. So that is the thing. But here you see that there is one common issue when you are creating this kind of class. Now the common issue is that you see this ID. So this ID is a common variable. Okay. So when I say common variable, I don't mean to say that, okay, uh, both of them are going to use same ID, but I mean to say that, okay, here also you see that this ID is a primary key auto generated here. Also the ID is primary key and auto generated for both of them. I'm using the same generation type. So here also I will be using identity strategy and here also I will be using identity strategy. So in terms of writing class, when I'm writing this thing, why should I be repeating each and every time? So that's the main question here. So why not we can write something like this, that owner, and then this is your class pet. This is your class domestic and wild pet are also there. The only difference is now you see that I have removed the ID. Now you will say that, okay, if you have removed the ID, where is the primary key then? Okay. Obviously in terms of table, if you want to have a primary key, so here also you need to have that at the rate ID annotation and the ID column. Absolutely correct. So what if we create something like this, a base class and keep the ID there. And then if I make the owner and the pet as the child of base class, then, so you will say that, okay, this also looks fine till the time that in both the tables, you are having the same ID column, the generation type is same that in both the cases you are using identity strategy. So this is good. But the question comes up is that in terms of hibernate, what kind of inheritance strategy will you use here? So for this particular pet part, where we were having domestic pet and wild pet, we went for the joint inheritance. So what kind of inheritance should we go here? Can we go for something like a single table? I mean, that is going to look even much more weird because in single table itself, you are going to have your ID, all the owner details, all the pad details and too much weird. Then if you say joint table, so it is going to be still weird. I mean, there is going to be a separate table only for this ID column. So still it is going to look even much more weird. And if you say table per class, so that is even not my preference at any point of time. Now you will say that, okay, do we really need a table for this particular base? Because believe me, why I only did this particular thing is so that I don't need to repeat this ID each and every time you may say that, okay, then you can keep your gender also there because gender is same. But as of now, let's keep gender aside here because here, instead of always choosing M and F, I may like to say that for owner, 
I will be using the complete word male or female and for pet I will be just using the word M or F yeah so that's why I'm not keeping the gender in this so I'm using only ID in my base class now many times there is a scenario that you want something like a creation time that when this particular record was created so creation time modification time so these details also you need so generally what people do is they again keep on repeating the variables so in the owner class also they will be adding two variables created at modified at in the pet table also they will be keep on repeating the things created at modified at so for those kinds of scenarios also we can keep them in the base class here created and modified it so you will say okay that is fine Abhishek but the point is how to code this like how to make a table for this so what I feel is that we actually don't need a separate table for piece because you see why we are just doing so that we can write our Java classes in a better way in terms of table I don't want a separate base table because there is no meaning of it so what I want is that when I code in terms of class at that time I have a separate class for this ID but when I go with the tables at that time it still looks same so ID should be still in the owner only and ID should be in the pet also and there should be no extra base table so in short what I want is I want a separate base class but not a table so for this what kind of inheritance do we need to go for how we are going to code the same let's see in the Eclipse itself directly so now we are in our Eclipse and what I have done is I have copied the demo 16 not from the demo 15 because in demo 15 if you remember we were having table per class architecture so I want to go for joined architecture so I've copied it from demo 14 so it is still the same copy of it and there is no change so this is how my owner class looks like something simple and this is how my pet class looks like so I have copied it from join and this is my domestic pet as you can see here this is my wild pet but today we don't need to go till this wild pet or domestic pet our main goal is this we need to keep it somewhere separate in a separate base class so what I'll do is that okay I being a little lazy what I'll do is I'll copy this pet from here and I'll just create something like this okay you will say okay Vishik it's much more better if you could have created a separate class but yeah lazy people are lazy nothing can be done much so what I'll do is I'll clear all these things I'll keep this get ID here because I need this one and here I just need this ID so this also I'll still keep it here yeah and here what I'll do is I'll add that particular two string so let me just add if you wish you don't even add here yeah I mean there is not any much need for this two string method here then I don't need inheritance here yeah I also don't want to create any table for this so I don't be adding all these two things so this also I will be removing from here yeah so I just want it to look something like this so is it fine so now you will say that okay now this looks even much more better yeah and what I will be doing is that in my owner class so here I will just say here extends something like this and I'll say base so this I will be doing I'll remove ID from here because ID will be generated on the parent itself yeah and here you will see this is one so what I'll do is I'll replace it with get ID so this is something what I will be doing let me copy paste again so that I can utilize it in my pet table or the pet class basically and here also I'll remove this get ID so again this looks better to me and here I'll just say control shift O control shift F now let's go to pet and here also let's do something simple so I'll just say here extends and I'll say base from here also I'll remove this so it's removed I'll remove get ID because I will be getting it from parent and here also I will be just adding it like this so get ID so this is also done and again let me say control shift O control shift F and yeah all done so here this is your pet extends base here this is your owner extend base so this also looks good this also looks good here this inheritance I kept because I have two child classes for the pet also it is not for the base it is for the child of pet and in the base since I don't need a table for it so I'm not using at the rate entity 
since I don't need a separate, I mean, even a table name. So I don't even need at the rate table. And since I don't want any of those kinds of inheritance, so I'm not using at the rate inheritance annotation. So this is something what I have done here. Yeah, looks fine. Nothing much difficult here. Everything looks same. So now they are having a common base here. Yeah. So this is the one. And what I want is that also for this base, you see, what are the chances that at any point of time I will be saying new of base? So there is no chance. I will never say new of base. I may say new of pet, new of owner, but I will never say new of base. So if that is the thing, I can make it an abstract class also. Yeah. So this is also better. Now you see we are actually adding one more concept of Java here. We are just making it an abstract class because I don't want to make a object for this particular class. Now I won't be able to say new of base directly. I can say new of pet and there I can get the ID. So yeah, if that's the thing, let's just execute the code directly. So if I execute this code here, let's see what happens. So I have clicked on this. What happened? It didn't even start it. Let me just click it again here. So I'll click there. Okay. Now it started and it gave me something error. And the error is it says that entity owner, that is this particular one owner. So this owner has no identifier. So although you are saying that, okay, for this owner base is the parent. So this base is a parent here. Yeah. And in the parent, you have mentioned this at the rate ID at the rate generated value. But still, when it comes to owner here. So at that time, only the ID field is coming, not the complete thing. Yeah. And because of this reason, it says that, okay, there is no identifier. And whenever you say at the rate entity, it should be having an identifier. So that's an issue here. Yeah. So I hope you are getting my point. What is the issue? Same way since first it interacted with the owner. So there itself, it raised the issue. Same issue will happen in your pet also. Because whenever you say at the rate entity here, you should be having one at the rate ID. But now that's an issue. The issue is here. We don't want to add the ID. We want it in a base. Then you will say that, okay, on base, you say at the rate entity, then it will create a table. I don't want to create a table. Yeah. So you will say now it's a deadlock. You don't want to create a table for base. Neither you want to add the ID in your child classes because of the repetition. So what is the solution of issue? So solution is something unique here. So what we will do is here, we will add one new annotation, which you haven't even seen, I guess till now. And that is your mapped super class. So this is one which is again coming from JPA or your Jakarta. So we will be adding this particular annotation that is map super class. Now let's see as always what is there in this annotation. So we'll see there is nothing in this annotation much. Okay. It's just an empty annotation. Now the job of this annotation is that you keep this kind of annotation always on your parent class. Yeah. And the purpose is that you don't want to make a table for this class as such, but you want to have these kinds of functionalities where let's say you want to have your basic ID. Sometimes you want something like created creation time or modification time. So those kinds of fields also you can keep here. Like when your row was created, when it was modified, since in our scenario, we don't want to have that particular thing. So I'm just removing it from here. I don't want to have those things. So I'm just using this ID here now, just by adding this annotation. And there is no change in your owner or pet. They are still looking same. Okay. So let's see just by adding this annotation, what magic happens. So now when you again execute your code, so let's see. So this time, as you can see, it is able to work fine. And the tables which are generated, let me directly show you in this particular part only. So let me just refresh here, refresh all. So let's go to this owner table. So this is owner table. Now here you see we are having ID. So the ID came from the parent. Yeah. But this ID is only available when you say at the rate mapped super class on the parent. And there is no base table as such here. Yeah. Same for the pet table also. So here also you got. So in terms of table, you won't see any difference. But in terms of class, we have created a separate class. And there itself, we can decide what kind of uh, what we see as generation type we can use. 
so now this is many a times helpful when people say that okay I'm having multiple classes and in all classes I just want to call it as ID I want to use the same generation type so at that point of time this is very very helpful kind of class many times people say that okay in all the tables I want creation time I want modification time so again you can keep those kinds of things here yeah so then it is beneficial now if you say what if in owner I want identity but in pet I want some different kind of generation like we saw in table per class so at that time obviously you'd want to go for a different one okay so at that time you may just remove this extends base and here you can go for a different one but till the point it is same you can go for this and it is not a case that you can use only identity you can still go for some other uh, thing like UUID or auto or those kinds of things also can be used here yeah since identity is my favorite one so I'm using this so this is how we have done here your tables still look same as they were used to look in your one-to-one -one mapping and hence you will see that when I will go here so I can execute this kind of thing so this script I'll execute this is the same script which I used in my joined table inheritance so I guess it has been executed or not so let me just click it again and now let's see so for the owner table again the things are same here so till 72 for our pet table again the things are same here 72 no issues your wild pet table is also looking similar your domestic pet table is also looking similar and if you execute the code so I won't execute all just one single option I will be doing so I'll just say 5 here and you see your data is still looking same ID is you are getting here as 5 and each and every part is coming so owner ID is also coming here fine yeah and each and everything is fine now yeah so irrespective of the thing what kind of mapping you are using so let's say you say I don't want to go for one-to-one -one mapping I wish to go for one-to-many or many-to-many -many. at that time also you can use yeah so I hope you have identified the usage of your mapped super class that this annotation is used when we want common things in a separate class but for this we don't want to create a table at that time the mapped super class is used mostly it is used for your main primary key this kind of thing or for your creation at or modification at for those kinds of columns it is generally used yeah so that's it for this video I hope you liked this new concept also and if you find this is a new concept and this can change your coding style and all these things then you know what you need to do you just need to click on the thumbs up icon you need to click on the share button you need to click on the subscribe button and you just need to keep on watching us and supporting our stuff yeah thanks everyone